Hi friends, this is Caitlin and today I'm working on a mini slimline card featuring heat embossed watercolor using distress inks. I fell in love with these colors from the Honeybee Stamps Gingham Galore Fall Paper Pack and I based all of my other decisions around those. The stamp set I'm using today is from Pawson Stamps and is called Hey Pumpkin and I used my distress ink color chart to pick out some inks that went well with my pattern paper. As always, all of the supplies I use and the specific colors will all be listed in the description box below for you. I stamped out my images with my Misty so that I could ink up my stamps multiple times and get a really clear impression since I was using watercolor paper. The texture of the paper can really affect how the images stamp and I didn't want there to be any gaps in the image or in my heat embossing. I used some anti-static powder on my paper to keep my embossing powder from sticking where I didn't want it and I stamped everything with black ink. This Simon ink will work for embossing but it's not slow drying so I had to work really quickly. Using a clear embossing powder over your stamped image is great for watercolor because it creates little wells for your color to sit in and if you are going for a more clean or simple watercolor, this really helps to hold the crisp lines. I also know that that's not the style for everyone, so if you want to be messy and you love those raw watercolor edges, by all means skip this step. I taped down my paper with some washi tape to a clipboard, and I'm so sorry, but I didn't realize that the black background would mess with the lighting, so we have to skip the first pumpkin I painted. The process is pretty much the same for all of them though, I just changed up the colors that I was mixing for each one. I stamped some of each of my distress inks onto my large acrylic block and used a number 3 brush to paint on a base layer of clean water to each section of the pumpkin first. Then I dropped in a layer of a light ink all over. Then I went in with a darker ink and I added the color just to one of the edges of that section to start adding in the shadows. To blend that out, I went back in with the first light shade I had used and painted over the areas where they met. Anytime there was too much color laid down, I would dry off my brush on a paper towel and hold it against the paper to let it soak up some of that water. I did this a lot in the middle sections to help keep them brighter and boost the contrast and shape of them, creating that rounded globe effect. I had an issue with pilling on this pumpkin, where this paper starts to break up and you get that little ball of paper fuzz. I've learned the hard way to leave it alone and let it dry. Once it's dry, I can usually pick it off with my nail or by barely touching it with a sand eraser. If you keep messing with it when it's wet, it'll get bigger and deeper and I promise it will mess up your image. Trust me, I speak from experience. I worked my way through each of the pumpkins, trying to make some light and some dark, just so that there would be a nice range of color across my panel. Honestly, I kind of zoned out and just went into autopilot with these. There wasn't a lot of thought to which would be each color, I just painted, which was actually really nice. That embossed border also really helps with this because you don't have to be super neat and you don't have to wait for each section to dry before you're painting next to it. That's one of my biggest pet peeves about watercolor. This was my first time trying this out with the black ink and the clear embossing, and I will definitely be doing it again soon. If you haven't tried it yet, I really encourage you to play around with it. I also really recommend using your distress inks for watercoloring. I love that I can use something I already own in a new way, and they blend so easily. I went in with a couple greens for the stems, just dropping in the lighter shade all over, and then adding the forest moss to the left side of each stem. I let my pumpkins air dry while I cut out the orange layer with this Honeybee Stamps mini slimline die and fussy cut the pumpkin cluster out with my scissors. I'm pretty sure that right now this stamp set doesn't have a coordinating die, but this shape is so easy to cut you really don't need them. I recently got these Fisker scissors and the handle is a little bit different. I think that I like them, but they're taking some time to get used to. Per my usual, when this was done, I also went in with my white gel pen to clean up any areas where my color made it outside of the lines. This is 100% not necessary, it just makes me feel better about my overall look when the project is complete, especially because this card was so simple. I had plans to use this sentiment that says, you're the cutest pumpkin in the patch, and so I watercolored over that with a blue to match the pattern paper but it didn't work out for this mini slimline size, and I had to use a different sentiment. But I decided to leave in the footage of me trying to make it fit just for your amusement. In moving everything around, I also decided that the orange and blue paper against each other was just too much pattern. So I decided to die cut some plain white cardstock with one slimline die bigger than the orange panel, and I added foam tape to help frame out the orange panel and separate it from the blue. 
I think this also really helps to tie in the white border around the pumpkins and add a little more interest to the overall card. When I'm making a simple or small card, I really like to think of little ways that I can add more detail or impact without just adding images and cluttering it up. Adding dimension to a card is a really easy way to do that and it's so quick, you really can't mess it up. When I want to use a colored ink for stamping a sentiment, I always pull out my My Favorite Things ink cubes. So I grabbed my color chart that I made for myself to pick a color that would work. I thought I was going to go with blue, but I ultimately decided on a gray. I used one of the smaller slimline dies in that honeybee set to cut out the sentiment, and then started playing around again with where everything would line up with my pumpkins. This time though, I knew that using a single line would fit much better on the card. My strip was too long, so I lined up the sides of the die again, putting the end where I wanted it to be, and ran it through my big shot again. Then it was time to adhere it down, and I used a little bit of liquid glue just so I could make sure that that top line was very parallel to that orange panel, and then added the same liquid glue onto my pumpkins and kind of placed them overlapping on top of my cinnamon strip, and again was able to kind of adjust and wiggle them around until I liked where they were placed. I decided that this card needed some sparkle, so I grabbed this sequin mix from Possum Stamps called Dreamy Days, and I picked out a few soft white sequins. I feel like sequin placement does not come naturally to me, and I'm always moving them around and questioning myself. If you have any embellishment tips that you can share with me, please leave me a comment below. I'm very interested to see in how you guys approach your sequin placement, or do you just skip it altogether? There's got to be a solution here. I've been watching a lot of Kathy Zilski and I really love her approach to it, but I just, I just feel like I'm not getting the hang of it yet. One thing I can tell you that I absolutely love is this embellishment tray from Twiddler's Nook. I love that I can pour out my sequins, sort through my colors, pick what I want, place them down, and then it's so easy to pour them back in my bag without making a mess everywhere. That is truly a lifesaver. Well friends, that's going to wrap up day 5 of this October Eve series. I hope that changing it up and showing some watercolor instead of my usual Copic coloring was a nice change. Fair warning though, tomorrow's video is going to be very heavy in coloring, just to make up for it. I hope that you were inspired to try out that embossed watercolor technique, and if you aren't subscribed yet, please click that button because I have so much more fun coming your way. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Have a great day and happy crafting.